The summer that changed my life. This summer, I spent my time volunteering at Mercy House of Welcome in Adelaide. Mercy House offers services to asylum seekers and refugees, including English lessons, playgroups, legal support, assistance with accommodation, art classes, gardening bills, food, clothing, financial counselling and companionship. Their vision is to give those they work with equal access to basic human rights, such as education, healthcare and social welfare. During this summer, I help teach English and assist with playgroup sessions. I met with people who had come to Australia from the Middle East and used the classes for both learning and socialising. Though there was a language barrier, we were able to have many laughs during this experience and began to forge strong friendships too. On a very hot 42 degree day, a woman had arrived at Mercy House. I was introduced to her and her sons on my arrival. As I sat down, Meredith, one of the coordinators, came to talk to me about the woman and her two boys. Her name is Fasana and her sons are Ryan and Aiden, Meredith told me. She's just spent six years on Nauru Detention Centre with her husband and children. The boys are three and a half years and 18 months old. I realised that the children were born on Nauru. She doesn't have her licence but can drive well, so we're going to start by helping her with her driving test. I asked Meredith how Fatina was getting home that day and offered to give her a lift. It's far too hot to walk, I explained, and it was, especially for her boys. I explained to Fatina that I could drive her home and she gratefully accepted. We loaded our belongings into the car and strapped in all the children. On the drive to her home, she told me many details of her time on Nauru and how difficult it had been there, particularly bringing up two children in such an environment. She also explained to me that both her children had seen a child psychologist, both on Nauru and when they'd arrived in Australia. Ryan is very naughty, she told me. He never sits still and always hurts his brother and shouts. She went on. The doctor says he should be outside more. He has too much energy. I hadn't had any experience with children like Ryan before, so I felt at a loss for what to say. I just listened. We arrived at her home and I helped her inside, carrying the youngest, Aiden, on my hip. I handed him over to her, we hugged, and she thanked me. I would return again to Mercy House on Wednesday morning and had offered to pick up Fatina and her children as it was to be hot once again. This would become a regular schedule of me picking her up and dropping her home. I helped Fatina with things like food, clothing and furniture for her home and family. During the visits and car trips, I was able to interact more with Ryan too. He didn't speak English, although he did have a couple of words in his vocabulary, the most common being hello and sorry. Sometimes he'd copy the last word in my sentence while I spoke to his mum. I watched as Ryan would run from one end of the house to the other and bounce quickly between activities, never engaged for more than a minute or so with each toy. I had remembered what Ryan's doctor had said about getting him outside, so I took every opportunity to play with him on the trampoline and watch him ride his scooter. He enjoyed these times immensely. I wondered what other activities I could come up with that might captivate and engage this young boy. As for what I had witnessed, the majority of time was spent running around, throwing toys, yelling and on the occasion hitting other children. I wondered about Ryan's early experiences in Nauru and what it must have been like to grow up in a detention centre. I thought about my own children's early experiences and the differences based simply on being born in one place versus another. After thinking about Ryan all weekend, on Monday I approached Emma, the Mercy House coordinator, and asked what she thought about Ryan's behaviour. He's a refugee child who displays very typical behaviour for a child who has spent that amount of time in a refugee camp such as Nauru, she explained in a very matter-of-fact way. It usually comes from either having to fight for anything you want at the camp, or witnessing violence, or both. Emma explained that perhaps Ryan always had to fight for the things he wanted to play with, and that that might explain why he was so protective of his toys. She also explained that if Ryan had witnessed violence, that he may just be replicating what he'd grown up with, and that that behaviour was considered normal, even with Fatima's gentle attempts to deter and discourage any hitting or aggressive behaviour, which seemed to result from jealousy or frustration. Every bit of energy was given to making the family feel welcome at Mercy House, particularly for Ryan. I witnessed the ways in which the staff would make him feel included through various activities and play, 
Catering to his needs, they would take him outside for soccer and eventually returning indoors to a calmer environment for fruit and water. Ryan was calm after being outdoors, when he'd become physically exhausted or when he'd found an activity that truly captivated him, like building with Lego. Watching Ryan play, I couldn't help but wonder what kindy in a year's time and eventually school in two years time might be like for Ryan, given his behaviour and also being a student learning English as an additional language. How might Ryan be made to feel safe and included during his education, I wondered. As a pre-service teacher, it was my job to find out. Education is a fundamental right and is seen as a way to help in the construction of a better, more prosperous and tolerant world and also as a tool to promote personal and social development. This means ensuring that all students not only receive an academic education, but one that ensures the social development of all students too. How a school community comes to understand a child and their family background so they can work with them in partnership is incredibly important. How a school community comes to manage a student with behavioural difficulties is also incredibly important. When we get these things wrong, it can result in the child feeling as though they don't belong and even educational exclusion. The Australian Human Rights Commission states in their Convention on the Rights of the Child that parties agree that the education of the child shall be directed to the development of the child's personality talents and mental and physical abilities to their fullest potential. Ryan and Aidan hadn't come to Australia from Iran like their mother and father. They had come from a place few of us can imagine, a place where things are significantly different from life in Australia. An exponential adjustment to a new way of life from the detention centre would be needed and the selected school would need to be proactive in promoting social and educational inclusion for these boys. My time spent at Mercy House and my ongoing contact with Fatima and her family has taught me a lot. I've learnt much about the treatment of refugees on Nauru and the impact this environment has had on the development of Fatima's two boys. I came to Mercy House to volunteer my time and am grateful for this opportunity to work with these people, including meeting this wonderful family that I now consider friends.